Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel, I'm an airline pilot and in today's video let's look at the descent in the Airbus A310. When you approach in the top of descent as indicated on the navigation display over here, we'll select our FCU altitude down as soon as we are cleared to do so by our traffic control. So in our case let's go down all the way to 11,000 feet. And once that is done we'll have to um, pull the altitude knob out like this and now we can see on the FMA profile descent is being armed. As soon as the aircraft is going to overfly the top of descent that means we will start our descent. Shortly before we do so the vertical deviation scale appears on the navigation display. And now we'll just monitor as we overfly the top of descent that our aircraft actually starts descending. Here we go, thrust mode goes into retard, profile descent mode comes on, and now the aircraft starts dis its descent. Now, in the present release version, it seems the Airbus does have some issues. We can see that we are getting high on the profile right now, and it is not really following its path either. So what we can do in these cases is go to level change, select the descent speed manually, and then kinda keep it on path like this. I hope that IndieBuild is going to fix that problem soon, but until that is done, we'll just have to help ourselves. Now, the airplane is kind of diving for the speed that I've selected, 277 knots, 280 knots. And we can see that we are catching up with our VNAV deviation here once again. This does currently seem to be an issue with the A310 because I tried to record this video three separate times and three separate times it had the same problem. So I'm hoping that gets fixed soon. But until it does, here's the workaround. So, use level change mode, and then kinda try to keep your airplane close to the VDEF that you have on your FMC. So in our case, let's fly even faster, let's go 300 knots, and then we'll just have to work our way around this. At present, there is unfortunately no useful profile information on the um, Econ pages, so that's why it is a little bit nasty and why we just have to help ourselves like this. But as you can see, when we are doing it manually, when we are um, setting our target airspeed manually, then we can kind of follow the VNAV profile by following the VDEF over here. Now once IndieBuilds has fixed that issue, I will issue an updated video on the topic, but for the time being this just seems to be the problem we have to deal with. At some point it can be very helpful to select the constraint buttons on the um, EFIS control panel up here, and another way how we can help ourselves with the descent is just checking that altitude banana over here and putting that close to the waypoint where we have our altitude restrictions. So for example, we have set an altitude of flight level 110 in the FCU right now, and we can set our altitude banana down to level 110, um, close to Rarup, and then we will more or less meet this restriction. Let's even fly a little bit faster, 320 knots. And as soon as the airplane has caught up with the target speed, we can see where the banana then is going to be. I do have to admit, this is not a very convenient solution for the moment, but until IndieBuilds has actually fixed the problems that the um, V10 currently seems to have with the VNAV descent, I'm afraid this is all that we can actually do about it. Now 
now we can see the altitude banana is lying directly over at Rahop for flight level 110. So now we are good to go with the descent like this. It is worth noting that without a VNAV profile available at the moment, it might be a very good idea to cross check the distance between Rahop and the center fix for the runway, which at this moment is around about 20 miles. So if we arrive here in flight level 110, and then we have 20 miles to get down to um, 3,000 feet. We subtract those, so 11,000 minus the 3,000 we should have here gives me 8,000 feet to lose. Time 3 is round about the distance we need. So that quickly brings us to the conclusion that we need to probably increase our rate of descent a little bit more in order to cause Rarob not at 110 but a little bit lower. So let's get the speed break out. Initially just halfway. You can see how the banana is coming forward now. Approximately 15 minutes prior to landing, it's time to turn our seatbelt signs on. So, with the speed we are flying right now, that would pretty much be now, when you're passing approximately 20,000 feet. So, we are looking inside all the time right now because we know the weather is good, but always have a look outside as well to check if there is any need for anti-icing when you are uh, in the descent. So, in case anti-ice is needed in the descent, select the ignition to continuous relight prior to selecting engine anti-ice. So, that would be the ignition, now put it to the right, continuous relight, and then put your engine anti-icing on. Let's continue our descent to 3,000 feet. That is set. And once we're cleared to an altitude, we'll also reset our altimeters to the local pressure, which is going to be 1013 on this arrival. Quick look onto the VNAV deviation scale. It's now showing us we're a little bit low, but since we are kind of estimating manually our altitude, I would say that we are actually quite good. Now, what we can always do is to check here. Distance remaining to destination is now 42 miles. We're now at 12,000 feet, but we still have to lose a little bit of airspeed. So, in my opinion, let's get it down to 10,000, then we start losing our speed, and then we can retract the speed brakes. Now, this is really an approximation here. So, speed brake up. Speed back to 150 knots. Now the airplane will more or less fly level and lose its airspeed. Passing 10,000 feet, we'll put the landing lights on, we'll put the turnoff lights on. And use the ignition as required, as explained in the uh, climb part of the tutorials. Now, according to the Inibuilt manual, at 10,000 feet, you are not required to turn the landing lights on, but the runway turn-off lights would do the trick. Now, you can agree or disagree with that. I know that at least some German operators use the landing light here as well. The reason why Inibuilt probably suggests not to use the landing light yet is because they have to be extended, and therefore they cause additional drag while the turn-off lights are just fixed built into the airframe. Now that we are below 10,000, we can quite simply put our altitude banana right where we want it to be. So, as we can see right now, with the banana as it is, we would end up at uh, 3,000 feet at the center fix for runway 23. Then we still have to lose a little bit of airspeed, so it is a good idea to put the banana just in front of the uh, center fix or just in front of the final approach fix to allow a couple of miles to lose your airspeed. A good rule of thumb there is put 10 knots above 200. So in our case, since we're flying 250, 
five miles, so one mile per ten knots. And um, by doing that, we allow ourselves a little bit of level flight in order to lose our airspeed. If you do find yourself to be a little bit low, that is not a problem at all. You can simply go to vertical speed mode by pulling the VS knob and then set whichever desired vertical speed you may have in order to get your airplane back on a profile and place the altitude banana accordingly. For our case, let's just go back into level change. We'll descend the airplane down to the altitude of 3000 feet and from there on we are going to capture our ILS. This is going to be it for today's video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed it. I wish that I was able to provide you with a little bit more in-depth tutorial about how to do all of this in managed flight. Unfortunately, even with three recording attempts, the INI did not allow it to happen. So for now, thank you very much. I'm looking forward to see you all again on the next one. And as always, like, comment and subscribe. And if you really want to support the channel, you can do it through the Buy Me A Coffee link in the video description below. Thank you very much for your attention and I'm looking forward to see you all again soon.